This is OXDF, and today I'm looking at the backdoored VSFTPD server from La Casa de Papel from Hack the Box. This isn't a necessary step to solve the box. If you're looking for that kind of stuff, go check out my blog post on the box. Uh, I'm just digging in here to figure out exactly why this FTP server behaves the way it did, why the backdoor is slightly different than what you read about in uh, various blog posts, etc. from the last uh, eight years of exploiting this. Um, I'm actually going to start with the original backdoored version and taking a look at that. In that here, I'm going to go ahead and also put that up on my GitLab page so that uh, you can play with it as well if you want. Uh, I'll go ahead and extract it, and then I'm going to go into the file and run make to try to build it. This is actually going to fail, uh, and after some troubleshooting and Googling around, I came across this blog post, which contains problems that he ran into um, installing the SFTPD from scratch in Ubuntu. Uh, and looking at the errors I was getting in this post, uh, it turns out that there is a relatively easy fix to the problem I was having. Uh, if I go into the make file itself, which is just uh, instructions for how to build the software, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add lcrypt to the end of the libs line. Uh, after saving that, I'll do a make clean to wipe out what I've done before. And, and then make, and on this time it will build. There'll be a couple errors, but that's fine. And I will be left with a 64-bit uh, binary here, as I was hoping. Um, before I dive into IDA, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the source code. Uh, I know from reading blog posts that the backdoor is in string.c, and that the function that's called is uh, something with extra, yeah, VSF sysutil extra. And you can see right here, this is where the backdoor is. So in this function, string contains space. Um, it looks for a space and it returns if it does. Um, but if it doesn't, it then it's going to do this extra check where it looks for 3a in the buffer and then checks the next character and sees if that's OX29. Um, 3A29 is ASCII for colon uh, close parentheses, so that's a smiley face. And if that matches anywhere in the buffer, it's gonna go ahead and call this uh, VSF sysutil extra. I'll go ahead and copy that to my clipboard down here, and I can run over to the, uh, it's a sys.penutil.c, and when I look in there, I can search for this function, uh, and here's where it's defined. And then this matches up very nicely with the back door. Um, it's defining a socket. It is then listening uh, as a IP socket on port uh, 6200. It is going to accept addresses from any, or it's going to listen on any. Uh, it's going to bind. It's going to do a listen on accept. It's going to duplicate the standard in, standard out, and standard error over to this new socket. And then it's going to call exec L on bin sh and run the shell. So that's what we're looking for. Let's see if we can find that in the uh, in IDA it's with the binary. I'll go ahead and open up the, again, this is the original backdoor file, not the one from La Casa de Papel. Uh, it's an elf, open it up. Um, so I wanna try to find that backdoor function in here. Uh, you can see over here on the left, there's just a ton of sub uh, functions here going on. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to start at the top and dig in. Uh, what I decided to do was to go over to the imports. I know it's called using exec L to call bin sh. That's not something I'd expect to see too often in an FTP daemon. So I'll come over here and control F to look for that. And uh, there it is. It only shows if I double click on it, uh, I can see the definition. If I right click on it and go to xrefs or crossrefs, cross references, cross references, graph two, I'll get a graph showing all the calls to the function. Um, I just kind of chunky graph here, but it's, uh, I can zoom in, and I see only one function is ever calling this, and it's the 15BA0. So I'll go ahead and close this, go to the function window, control F, 15BA0, and, and there's my function. So if I click on that, I get the function here, and it looks just like what I saw in the source. Uh, there's the socket call, there's the bind call, uh, listen, and then on, when, on accept, we're going to see this uh, exec bin sh. So, and um, there's the dupe call as well, three times for the different uh, standard in, standard out, and standard error. So now that I have some idea what this looks like in the, uh, oh, before, sorry, before I do that, I'm going to also go up here and look at who calls this function. So I can hit X again for the called once, and it's called here in this function, um, and this is exactly, again, what we're looking for. Here's the check to compare a byte to 3a, which is the colon. And then the next thing, comparing the byte to 29 for a closed bracket, I'm going to go ahead and make the assumption that R12 and RDX are one byte beyond each other. 
Uh, I can probably look up and verify that above. But uh, And then if that's successful, there's the call to the function here. Um, I could keep digging up to see where this is exactly uh, called uh, and how it goes back to the main loop, but I got a pretty good idea what the back door looks like at this point. Uh, so I'm going to pull this off to the side here and go ahead and open up another instance of Ida. And this time I'm going to open up the version that I had from La Casa de Papel. Uh, so I'm going to try to find the back door again. Um, I can start off doing the same thing I did last time, looking through the imports and trying to find exec L. Unfortunately, or fortunately, or for whatever reason, it doesn't show up this time. Um, so now I can tell this value has been modified. Um, so how am I going to find what that looks like? Um, well, the next thing I can try is I have these compare instructions. And I have to imagine that because the version on La Casa de Papel took the same version, the same back door, you know, the smiley face, that these compare instructions are likely to be the same. So go ahead and copy that. Um, I'll go over to a, new, a tool I recently learned about, um, disassem.ninja, um, where I can come over here and I can put in this string of uh, uh, assembly language, and it'll give me the bytes, the byte code out here on the other side. Um, for whatever reason, I need big endian for this, and I don't quite know why, but the tool doesn't let me get that. Uh, but I can just remember 29103C80. Uh, and so if I come over here and go back to my code and do a search for sequence of bytes, uh, in fact, it's already there from what I just searched for previously. Uh, and if I make sure to select find all occurrences, I'm putting in hex and hit OK. It shows up one time, which is perfect. If I go there, it looks very similar to what I was looking at over here. Uh, here's the check for 3A. Here's the check for 2.9. And if that's successful, uh, the call to this sub function here uh, where I see these IB tables rules. Um, I did a little bit in the post showing how uh, these IP tables rules open up port 6200, um, where there's a JavaScript listener running the spy PSY shell, um, which fits with what you saw if you saw the box. Um, so I won't go into that too much here. Um, I did want to show one other way, the way I actually actually saw uh, first found this back door, and that's to go to the strings. Um, so if you go to view, subviews, strings, um, and this is what I'll often do whenever I have a binary that I'm trying to really orient myself in. Um, if there's a login prompt or some sort of prompt that comes before you put in text, uh, I want to find that and look, therefore I can find where the text is taken in right afterwards and what's, how it's done with it and if I can do anything to exploit that. Um, so in this case, I'm scrolling through uh, the various strings. Um, obviously, I'll spend a little more time on it than the speed I'm going right now. Uh, and at the end of the list here, uh, these two strings jumped out at me right away, uh, IP tables, commands. And again, I don't know why and that's a legitimate FTP, FTP server would be messing with IP tables, especially not on port 6200. So it's definitely interesting. Uh, I can double click on one of those, uh, click on it here on its name, and hit X to get the cross references and go see where it's called. And that takes me right to this function. Um, and again, I can get cross references to the function and see where it's called you know, just after the check. Hopefully, this was helpful, and uh, talk to you next time. Thanks.